Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial I want to demonstrate how you can make photorealistic sceneries for Flight Simulator X or Prepare 3D using Semproc. Um, I'm going to do a quick example where uh, I use some real-world data to make some photo scenery and at the moment you're looking at QGIS where I'm looking at the data I have available. So I have four GeoTIFF files of imagery for a certain area. I have a shape file with water polygons for that area. And I have a shape file with some roads for that area. And with these three elements, we're going to make photorealistic scenery in Semproc. So let's switch over to the Semproc tool. The script to make the photorealistic scenery is quite simple as you see it here. It only contains four lines of code. The first line of code reads all the four GeoTIFF files into Semproc. The second line of code loads the water shape file and the third line of code loads the road shape file. So with that we have all the data loaded into Semproc and then sort of all the magic to make the photorealistic scenery happens in the last step which is the export resample photoreal BGL step. And as you can see, this is a relatively complex step that takes a lot of attributes. So we're going to walk through them one by one. The first attribute is the file name. This one is the file name of the texture filter configuration file that we're using to process um, the imagery before we pass it on to resample. And it's in this texture filter configuration file that a lot of the sort of magic happens to, to make the photoreal scenery and we're going to dive into that configuration in a bit. Then the next attribute selects all the raster features to be used as input for making the scenery. The third one sets uh, can set an additional masking polygons used to exclude certain areas uh, in the photoreal but we're not using masking here so we just have the attribute of none. Then the next one sets the compression level that we want to use in resample. In this case, I put it at 80%. That's usually a good balance between quality and file size. Then the next attribute is the no data value to use in your imagery. In this case, I don't want to use a specific no data value. So I just put minus one for all three channels there. Uh, but if your data has, a, if your imagery has a very specific no data value, you can set it in here. Then the next one, and I have to think again. Um, okay, these are the levels of detail. So I can specify what the minimum and maximum level of detail is that I want resample to generate for the scenery. In this case, I put both at minus one, which means that uh, resample will by itself determine sort of the minimum and maximum levels of detail based on the on the data that we're uh, passing to it. Uh, then the next attribute specifies the water mask and blend mask channels uh, and that's only to be used if you have an input image uh, like four or five band image that already includes water mask and blend masks then you can specify here which of the bands is the water mask or the blend mask. Uh, in this example, we're not using data that contains these masks already. We will be generating a water mask in a different way. But in this case, we don't have to specify uh, the, the band here. Then the next attribute specifies if I want to make day or night imagery. Uh, in this case, it's day. Then this attribute specifies the seasons that we want to use. Um, if you want to make a, a photo reel file with just one season in there, so every, all year long the same representation, you can just put a star here. But in this case, I've defined two season blocks, and when we dive into the texture filter configuration file, you will see uh, how they're being used. So I have defined summer to last from April to September, and then I have a second season that's from October till March. Then the this attribute specifies the output folder where we want to create the uh, BGL file. And the last one is uh, the base name of the file. So that's the name that will be given to the file name. 
And this is all you have to do to create photorealistic scenery. But like I said, a lot of the magic is in the texture uh, filter configuration. So this is the example texture filter configuration that I'm using um, for this tutorial. I've loaded two sample images. Uh, these are just small pieces of the images I showed you in QGIS. Like the input images are like 5,000 by 6,000 pixels or so. They're quite huge. So that loading them into the texture filter editor would be quite slow. So I've made two samples of it, each about 1,000 by 1,000 pixels in size. And that way it's easier to, to tune your filter here before you run it, before you run the configuration on all the images when making the photo real. So I've added them with the add image button here. I've also added vector data in this case because we want to use it in the in the configuration. And I've added the water and the road file that we were also loading um, into the script before. So what does the script then define? We have the input image, which is, well, like you see here, just the, the imagery. And then here we have four different output values. We have an output image, which is just sort of the, the uh, visual representation. We have an output season, that's for the second season. We have an output water mask and an output night. And I'm going to have a look at all of them. So let's take the output image first. So we have, this is our input image. Uh, often the images look slightly more dull into Flight Simulator than they might do in your GIS tool. So then you can tune the colors uh, in Semproc a bit. So I've put a color correction step in between. And here you can basically, um, you see value X and Y values here for each of the bands. The, that's basically defining a curve for a sort of yeah, curve uh, correction of the colors. Like you might see it in, uh, in Photoshop for other image editing uh, applications as well. That you can, with some curves, uh, correct the colors a bit. So in this case, I've uh, removed a bit of red from the image to make it uh, look slightly differently. Um, in this case, it's just to show how you can do this. Um, it, it takes a bit of tuning and testing to see what works best uh, in the sim, because that's of course what, what matters in the end. Then, like I said, uh, we have a second season as well. So we have an output season block. And for the second season, I just did a different color correction in this case. So as you can see, I changed the color to make it a bit more yellowish. Uh, that might represent a full uh, representation of your imagery. It's not a really good example, I have to be honest, because uh, I just did it quickly, tune the colors a bit. Uh, but I just want to show that you can have different representations for different seasons this way. So we have two outputs, one for the summer and one for the second season with different colors. And now we want to have a water mask as well. Because if you look closely, it's, it's not really good to see it, but the dark bit here under the mouse is, is water. And this is a river, so it's also water. So we want to create a water mask for that. To do that, I start with an empty, empty raster, just a black raster. Um, and it gets the same size as the SD input image. Then on that raster, I burn polygons, and these are the water polygons, because here in the filter, I select from file is water.shape. So I select all the polygons from the water shape file. I burn them with a white color into this image. Um, and here you can also see that I set a bit of blur to make their edges uh, a little bit more soft. Then I invert this image. Um, that's needed because the resample tool wants the water to be white and the, uh, sorry, the land to be white and the water to be black. Uh, but if I would start with a already white image, I can't burn sort of other polygons in it because they're added on top of each other and white is already you know, fully saturated in a way. So that's why I started with a black image, uh, make the water white first and then I have to reverse it. And that's the water mask that we're going to use. Of course, I could also have chosen to make the uh, water polygons uh, not black, 
with a bit of gray and then flight sim would blend the image with the water sort of uh, to show your imagery through it uh, now you will just get the flat sim water uh, because it's fully black and in a similar way we're also going to create a night version of of this image um, and i'll do a very simple one i'll start with a black empty uh, raster again and i've just selected a couple of roads and i burn them into uh, the the black image as orange lines so here you can set like the, the width the thickness of it i select the road shape file here for all the features uh, i chosen to use an orange color uh, i set a bit of blur again to make it a bit softer on the edges and what i've also done here you can probably see it better if i zoom in a bit and i'll toggle the setting i've added a little bit of noise to it to make it look yeah, a bit more random a bit more uh, more nice so that's all we have set up uh, in the texture filter configuration file so we have normal output image seasonal output image water mask and a night output image you might be saying hey i'm missing something yes there is also you see it here an option to make a blend mask so if you have some vector data that you want to use to, to blend your photo reel based on country or state borders, you can do that with that step. You can also add more seasonal outputs. If you want to make imagery with three or four seasons, you can just have multiple uh, output season steps in here. Um, it's, it's just how fancy you want to make it. But this way we've set up the texture filter configuration for our photo reel and then all we have to do is run this script and then it will load all the images and create the scenery so when i press run you can see it read four raster files it read a couple of shape features for the water and for the roads and now it is creating all the input files for resample so it's making like the the normal uh, normal season images it's making the uh, the images for the second season is making the images for the water mask and for the night and then Semproc is calling resample to compile it all and this compilation usually takes quite long especially if you're processing a big area and, and you have seasons and night included it's it's quite a lot of data to chew on um, but you see here with the progress bar that it's running I'm not going to bore you in this video and wait for a couple of minutes uh, for the processing to finish i've actually already uh, processed it before and loaded this copy into the tmf viewer tool of the sdk so as you can see here uh, here we have sort of the whole area that i showed you in qgis before so the four images all put together we have the water mask on top which is based on the vector data that we used Uh, we have different seasonal variations because if I switch to January instead of July you can see that I have different colors uh, and like I said it's it's a bit quick script that I use this time it looks maybe not super realistic but it's just to show you how you can set up the different uh, versions and we also have the night representation which in this case is relatively simple I just picked a few of the road types and burned lines for them into the night image so that's how you can make a photorealistic scenery with samproc using the texture filter editor to define your workflow how you want to manipulate the images and just as a teaser to to finish with uh, i want to show you that like, like here we had a relatively simple uh, season it's, it's a bit crude but you can make it much nicer than that uh, this is another example of a, of a scenery i made so here you see the summer variant um, which yeah shows the the images with all the with all the right colors but in this case i've also made a seasonal variation and as you can see here it looks much more natural what i've done here is a bit more complex than what i showed you in the script before uh, i've been using different sort of yeah, color corrections of the image uh, making them more brown more red more yellowish more oranges and then using 
data of where vegetation is. I've sort of randomly blended those different colors together to give you the autumn look with, with orange, green, brownish colors being mixed. Uh, so you can see if you, if you have the right data, you can do quite cool things uh, with the texture filter configuration. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this new feature, just post them on the forum on FS Developer. And thank you for watching.